Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a shop my stash. The way that I've done this previously has been like a makeup shake up so I'll get all of my daily makeup stuff, put it back in the drawers and swap it for something different and I kind of commit to a month of using those products and seeing how I like them. The reason that I don't do this very often is because I don't really want to swap out everything that I'm using right now. The foundations I'm using are my current favourite foundations. Some of the stuff I'm really quite attached to and I'm really enjoying the way that it works for me and so I think mm, I don't really want to swap those things out whereas certain categories I definitely feel like I need to shake it up a little bit. In preparation for this video I thought I'm gonna watch some other Shop My Stash videos and see how other people do this kind of thing. So I watched a few different ones, lots of people do it that way and they do kind of like the monthly basket or the monthly makeup bag um, and then I think it was Kathleen Lights that I was watching and she went through her makeup collection and chose one thing for each category and basically did a first impression or like a, as if this was a brand new face of makeup. So for some people that would be like a, um, a get ready with me with old products or revisiting products that you already had, whatever you want to call it. But that really appealed to me because it meant that I could more regularly go through my makeup collection, try things out that I've either maybe not tried out or I've only ever tried once or I've forgotten how I feel about those things. And it might actually reintroduce some things back into my collection that I'm using on a daily basis without feeling like, I've got to give up my real favourites. So I'm going to take you over to my main makeup storage area over here. I'm going to choose a whole new face of makeup and tomorrow morning I'm going to put it on my face and share what I think about it. So these are my base drawers, so like foundations etc. And this is um, a Calax unit from Ikea, I'm sure you're familiar. I think I got these from Amazon. Um, and uh, then I've just put an extra insert into these two to make them into smaller shelves. It's just more usable for me and how I want to use them. So we're gonna start off with primers. I don't use primers very often. Um, I have a fairly decent selection of different kinds though. I'm tempted to go with this because I know I really liked it, but I think I'm gonna try this one because I don't think I really ever gave it a fair shot. I don't remember using it for a long period of time. The Professional Hydrate Primer from Benefit. Concealer is tricky because I don't, oh, what on earth is this? There's a sweet, there's a sweet in my concealer drawer. I don't always use concealer um, and obviously it's gonna depend on the foundation, but I think I'm gonna choose, um, let's go with the collection Long Lasting Perfection Foundation, right. Um, so I don't want to go for anything too heavy. I tell you what I want to try again, this. This I remember being absolutely fantastic. The Essence You Better Work Gym Proof Waterproof Tinted Day Cream. I loved this, but I think it broke me out. And my skin's pretty good right now. So let's, let's see. Sprays, setting sprays. This could be primer sprays as well, I suppose. And then I have some powders. Okay, um, I've had this for ages and I've been meaning to do um, a video on it because I can't understand it, truthfully. This was really disappointing. I only tried it a couple of times. It was sent to me from Hourglass and it is incredibly expensive for what it is. A soft focus setting spray sounds like exactly what I would want, but I really didn't like it. And with that in mind, let's try this one again as well. This is the Hourglass Fail translucent setting powder. Don't get me wrong, it was really exciting to be on the Hourglass PR list, but I just wasn't wowed by anything that they sent me. Since it's just in this drawer, I do have the palettes as well down here. I'm gonna pick something here too. Um, I mean, where even to begin? I'm gonna use this because when I got it originally, I got it in my FabFitFun box. And it's very warm. I really wasn't feeling the warm colours at all. But since then, I've been really, really into them. So I think this actually might be something that I would want to use. The next drawers, this is actually um, the narrow, or sorry, shallow PAX unit. So it's the same as my wardrobes, but it's only 35 centimetres deep instead of 50. So it's a little bit shallower. It fits really nicely alongside the Calyx unit. And I've got some more makeup in these drawers. These drawers are a little messier than they used to be. Do I need a bronzer? I used to be all about a bronzer. 
And now I don't even know if I would want one. I loved this so much. I don't know why they discontinued it. It was so fantastic. You know, I'm going to pull this out because a couple of years ago, I couldn't get enough of it. It's the Kevin Aquan. This is quite expensive in full size, but the mini one of this is quite affordable, you know, compared to the regular Kevin Aquan stuff. It is the uh, sculpting kit, I think it's called. Um, sculpting highlights, sorry, the contour duo. And it's got the sculpting powder and the celestial powder, which is one of my all-time favourite highlights, that one right there. Blush, um, I don't want anything too sparkly since that highlight will probably be enough on its own. I really want to be able to use this. This is um, from Fenty. Uh, it is, what is it called? Daiquiri Dip, the Cheeks Out Blush um, cream formula. I can't do this with one hand. Here we go. I will definitely use this in one of these videos, maybe closer to the summertime, but it's definitely not something that I can easily wear. I don't think it's going to work with the eyeshadow. I'm tempted to pull out one of my deeper toned cream blushes, you know, like these ones. I'm going to do this because I, I've barely worn this. Uh, okay. This is trickier because I decluttered a lot of, I mean, I seriously, can you believe I decluttered mascaras? Can you believe? I decluttered a lot of mascaras. I decluttered a lot of eye pencils and things because I wasn't, I wasn't that excited by a lot of things. Um, so I feel like I've got a lot of, like much of a muchness type stuff. I'm going to use this, the Endless Silky Eye Pen from Pixie. It is a pencil. It def desperately needs sharpening. Um, but it is so, so black. It's almost like a gel, but it is a pencil. Mascara is tricky because I'm so picky about mascara. Tempted by the Sky High from Lash Sensational, but I'm going to go with Lash Paradise. I know I like this one. I seem to remember it transferring above my eyes. Maybe something for the brows. I'm gonna use, let's go old school and use Gimme Brow. What colour is this? It's shade one. It's quite blonde. We'll see what happens. Lipsticks. The most exciting of all. This was just calling out to me. I want something really that's going to be good, kind of like warm, not too, that's a bit too pinky movey. Something kind of maybe like brick coloured because of the eyes I'm probably going to end up doing. I love this but I have to stop using it in videos because it's been discontinued. They were so fantastic and I don't know why they don't keep making them. I've decided since I am probably going to go quite dark with the eyes since I've decided on that really dark liner because I usually do like a dark brown powder liner um, but if I'm going to use the black it's going to be quite dark. I'm going to use this which is a Fenty Beauty Gloss. Um, I don't know if you can get full sized of these because these were in a, a Christmas set a couple of years ago called Cake Shake. So it's the gloss bomb and it's just like slightly tinted. These aren't like massively, massively, but a little bit. So these are my picks. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. We are back. I am unpacking the box of makeup that I packed the day before. I'm also going to sharpen that pencil while I remember because it really does need to be done and uh, obviously apply my SPF. Now I wear Tretinoin or I apply Tretinoin every single evening as part of my Skin and Me subscription. I have a video coming about this on Friday if you're interested. It is good for anti-aging, but particularly for me, it was for my um, pigmentation. So part of that is I have to wear SPF every single day, but really we should all be wearing it. Just saying. Um, I'm going to apply my Professional Hydrate Primer. I honestly don't know whether or not this is really any different to the original. It feels like it's got a slightly more slip, maybe, possibly but I, I don't know. I didn't feel much of anything. Um, the Essence You Better Work, now this has been in my drawer for a little while and it seems like it's separated slightly. So I gave it a shake up and, and it's applied fairly nicely. It's thin. I remember it being quite thin. It builds quite nicely, but I had a hard time applying it over the top of um, the SPF and the Professional. I found that it was kind of pilling up a little bit. So I was using multiple different methods to try and blend it around my face without causing more of that. Um, but I, overall, I was really happy with the finish. Very lightweight, but a nice kind of natural finish. Just a little bit of concealer. It's not something I use every single day. Um, and I didn't find that this settled into any dry areas or anything, which is something that really puts me off concealer in general. This is pigmented. Super duper. This took some blending. Um, I will say, I think if you're a heavy makeup wearer, I'm not even sure how you would blend this because if you've got a very, very heavy base underneath this, like I can, 
get in there and really blend this out with my brush and I'm not really shifting too much of what's going on underneath it. But if you're wearing a really heavy base, I don't know how you blend that out. Truthfully, you'd have to be super, super sparing. Uh, the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Duo. I'm using a massive brush. Now, the reason I'm using this massive brush is because I like that it's kind of tapered, but it's large. So I feel like I don't get a really harsh line, uh, but this is very much not my wheelhouse sculpting, as you can tell. I'm, I'm struggling, but I quite like it. I don't know. The Celestial Powder is an absolute fave. It just gives such a beautiful glow. It's so difficult to get wrong. It's so pretty. And it's not that like high shine, frosty. It's just beautiful. The um, very, very warm Beauty Bakery palette. I missed the first clip of me putting on this eyeshadow. Let me tell you what the colours are, shall I? The colour I put on was Mango Pudding. And then I used Warm Cocoa to deepen up my um, lash line here before I put on um, the Pixi Endless Silky Eye Pen. I just wanted to show you this swatched because it is just in insane. So, 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 so black almost like a gel pencil. Um, so how I applied it was just a little bit along my lash line and then I used a pencil brush um, to just kind of smudge that. And I added a little bit more, smudged it a little bit more, added a little bit more, smudged it a little bit more. And I'd already deepened my lash line with that warm cocoa. So it just kind of works nicely and it's not too harsh. I took what was left on my brush of that eye pencil, took it under my eyes, and then again, softened it with that warm cocoa. Again, nothing too harsh, nothing that can look too wrong is my overall aim. Now, I was really not sure about the gimme brow because I thought it was gonna be too pale. I've struggled with my brows recently. I'm trying to um, grow them out. I'm trying to get to the point where I don't need to have them microbladed and I'm trying to hide my kind of not long for this world microblading because it's kind of fading and, and they've microbladed above where my actual eyebrows are so without penciling them in every day you can see where that tattoo kind of is just above. I really really liked this even in the blonde colour it was dry enough to give me some shape without feeling like the colour was messy. I really liked this I think I'm going to be using this on a daily basis. This is where we get into the kind of second chances category. Um, this is fine. The powder is fine. It's a really nice finely milled powder. I mean, it's expensive. It's from Hourglass. It's what you would expect it to be. Uh, but it's not kind of, there's nothing about it that makes me go, oh my God, wow, I must use this again. Um, the Lash Paradise from L'Oreal was always a favourite, but it is something that historically does transfer over my eyes. I really do like the kind of oomph, false lash, really beefy lashes that it gives, but I, I am concerned that that will happen again. And the Veil Soft Focus from Hourglass I'm gonna show you it spritzing now. This happens all the time. Whenever I try to use it, I have to clean it. So don't go straight in. You have to clean it and then you get this beautiful fine mist, which when you put it on your face, feels very luxurious and expensive. But just look at my face while I'm putting on my lip gloss here. It's so, so shiny. And this is at least two, three minutes afterwards. I waited a full five, tried to let it settle. And I decided that I was gonna to have to powder a little bit more, just in certain areas. I felt it was too wet looking. I appreciate that for some people that's a nice, you know, you like that glow. It wasn't for me, it was just too much. I had to knock it out. It's half an hour later. I am not pleased with the eye situation. I'm gonna say that this is the setting spray that's helped the eyeshadow to migrate a little bit. I realized I didn't use a um, primer, an eye primer. I don't tend to use an eye primer. I'm, ex I'm expecting my eyeshadow to kind of fade and potentially fall into the crease. It's fine, it is what it is but not half an hour later, and I don't expect my eye makeup to kind of end up coming further and further up here so quickly. I'm, I'm definitely, definitely blaming that on the setting spray. I have also got a little bit of transfer from my mascara up here, but again, that could be because it's being too wet by that spray. Everything else is looking pretty good, but I'm gonna come back in a little while and check in with you. Oh, I also wanted to mention that the lip gloss smells and tastes exactly like the old school Maybelline Water Shine. It's that, um, oh, what was it? Not pineapple. Watermelon. It's that watermelon, very synthetic, but that watermelon taste and smell that is so, so nostalgic. It's been four hours and I am much shinier than I would want to be. Um, bear in mind, almost always I would blot or repowder if I was wearing makeup and actually going out and doing something. So, you know, that's by the by, but I'm really, really not into that powder or that setting spray. I realised I chose them knowing that I didn't like them when I'd used them previously, but I kind of wanted to just show them on camera 
and maybe try them again. I, I want them to work, but they're not for me. I'll keep you posted about Tinted Day Cream because I did really like the finish. It's very lightweight, completely my kind of thing. And historically, I did really, really like this. It was just if it breaks me out. So I will let you know. Lash Paradise. I'm going to give it another go with the um, primer that I really like, the Lash Sensational Primer, but I have a feeling it's not going to do anything because it's the outer layer of the mascara. And if it's going to transfer, it's going to transfer, and apparently it is. Some things I'm going to keep in my rotation. The NYX Sweet Cheeks. I really liked this colour. It is very, very heavy, and um, it takes some blending, but I quite liked it, and I think if there's any time of year to use it, it's now. Um, and with that in mind, I'm also going to incorporate into my routine some sculpting because I quite liked it and I've already gone back, reviewed the footage, edited the whole thing and been like, it looks okay on camera. I mean, maybe you feel differently, but for a complete novice, I was happy with it. So I'm going to, I'm going to play around with that a little bit more. The Gimme Brow I was really happy with and I haven't used that for years. Um, and I definitely wouldn't have picked this out, um, being the uh, shade that it is, but it's really, really nice. Better than I remember it, honestly, and I've tried loads of brow gels in recent months trying to find something that's going to kind of like keep my brows up but not make a real mess because I have no actual colour here and so I really want to kind of push up the brows that I've got to hide that old microblading without ending up with a big swipe of dark brow gel and I think that that is actually the answer for me. Um, and the primer. Honestly, I don't know if it did anything. But I'll use it for a little while and we'll see. If I mention it again, you'll know. If I don't, then it was probably just a bit meh. The light is so crazy right now that I've actually had to use a massive mirror to cover up the window because otherwise, let me show you what the light would look like. You've got to love that late afternoon winter sun. Thank you for joining me anyway. Let me know what you thought of the format of this. If you'd like me to change it up, if you'd like to see this again, if you're not interested at all, let me know. I will be back on Friday with that skin and me slash tretinoin update. Um, because I've been kind of saying that I'm going to do it and I got an email the other day from Skin and Me saying it's time to do an update, we want to see what your skin's looking like, see whether or not we want to change your formula and I thought probably a good time to film a before and after so that is coming on Friday and I think we're going back to Primark on Sunday. It feels like it's been a minute, it feels like it's time, I think that's coming so stay tuned and I will see you guys then. Bye!